Clap, hush. Let's just say a particular, uh, I get angry, period. And I try to handle it the best way that I know how. And you're telling me, if it doesn't line up with truth, just leave it alone? Yeah. First of all, it depends on what you're angry about. What if somebody just get on your nerve? That's something like that. Then they're going to keep getting on your nerve until you get to the place where they don't. We put, this is the thing, there are times when we put ourselves in positions, right? Mm-hmm. If someone continues to get on your nerves and you don't know how to deal with it and you cannot stay away from them, then you need to try to check yourself as you went along with you. Because you cannot change that person. You can change your attitude or you can change your location. Hello? I hear what you're saying. You're saying I can run, but I can't hide because I got to deal with it. You got to deal with it. If, if it was, did you, see, this is the, the, I think one of the things I, I'm, I'm, I see, I'm trying to explain to that. If it happens and I leave the place where it's happened and it doesn't happen anymore, then one or two things is taking place. Either I have to sit down with that person and, and both of our attitudes change, or I have to stay away from that place. If it happens, if that place it continues to happen when I'm not there, then I need to check me and see why my camera is with me. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Any 
other questions? See, I believe that we are at a point in, in this journey where everything is beginning to come to a head. Um, almost every single day um, for the last few uh, months or weeks, there has been, or I should say every single week, and, and seemingly every other day, since we have been talking about this racism thing the last few months, an African American man has been killed, and some of which you have not heard of. <coughs> and I think it was um, in Chicago, maybe, where the dog shoot the, the young man's face off while the police are trying to take cameras for people who were uh, filming. Mm. And it, uh, that happened a few minutes uh, after the guy got shot in Charleston. So these are things that happen that we like hearing about. Um, the other thing is that I don't know whether I trust it or not, but the statement was made, I, I think I made a statement some time ago that it started in South Carolina and South Carolina had to begin to bring it to a resolution. Did I not say that? Yeah. Okay. Then I believe that the revolution is, is um, in progress because South Carolina is on one prosecuting. Now, Baltimore is beginning to is beginning to take steps to do prosecution. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. It's, okay, so it is hearing the truth from the Father concerning racism that brought us to a place where it began to be exposed and dealt uh, with in the place where it was the worst, uh, where the root of it was, and now uh, the revolution from the root of it is beginning to spread to other places. But the, That's just one thing. There are several things that are like that that have to be brought to the head. I say that one because it, everyone is so familiar with it. But there are other things as well um, that, that we are in the process of dealing with simply because we hear the truth about them, we know the truth and nature of them. Here the truth about it is, is more the essence of a thing or the nature of it or the root of it so that you can, um, so that you can alter the course of it. The keys, the authority to loosen and to violence loosen is, is the authority to um, bring a resolution to these things by exposing them and and loosening the light that it takes to heal the, the, the uh, harm that it's bringing to mankind. One, one of the other things that I, I see also is that it started, it started with racism and with African Americans, but I see it extending beyond that so that it's capturing fire with others. For instance, the um, the um, um, Hispanic guy that the police ran down with their with their vehicle, or or, yeah. or the or the or the or the white guy on the horse, you know. So so right. that the outrage is, you know, even even though we as a race have felt this for years, it, it's it's like others have to feel that sense of rage that we have felt all along in order to know what we have felt. Otherwise, how else could they feel what we feel or what we feel? I don't care about change Yeah. So, that, and that's the same thing that, um, that's happening also um, economically with um, what they call the shrinking middle class, um, feeling the, the, the brunt of, of the greed that, that this country has. Um, another one that is going to begin, they're going to begin to feel, is going to be um, the, um, the greed that's expressed by Pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because of um, the control that they have over the CDC and the uh, uh, um, CDC, um, NIH, 
Mage and the other, what the, the other acronym um, that approved medications. The FDA? Huh? The FDA? Yes. Uh, all of those are controlled by the pharmaceutical company. And all of those are making vaccinations for kids and medications for old people and giving them approval even though they know that they're killing them. Mm. Um, vaccinations have 50,000 times the amount of mercury that it has to be approved by the FDA because they know it. So it's these little things that, that's coming out that don't seem to be uh, spiritual at all, but they do have spiritual implications because everything that has an adverse effect on mankind has a spiritual origin and must be dealt with from a spiritual perspective. Greed is spiritual. We, 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 we look at, I think we've handled um, racism to the point where we may be able to see a greater degree of resolution in it than anything else. But there are many other areas, but we don't have to name every area. The key to it is getting the energy flow moving. And, and I believe that that's what's happening. Because I mentioned, I think, last week that another thing we need to be focusing on is ISIS and the, and the uh, way that things are going with like that, as well as focusing on uh, the, the roots of ISIS, what, what brought it about, um, the greed in this country. So racism covered a lot of areas, greed covered a lot of things, and, and, and uh, religion is the shelter for all of it. Because religion really does not deal with anything except a man-made effect or a momentary relief by, by virtue of making you feel good. It's like taking, um, it's like taking um, morphine uh, for a gunshot wound and doing nothing else for it. Just take the morphine so you don't feel the pain. That does nothing to them talk about, about the infection. So this whole thing of of uh, being as here rather as Peter heard brings us to the place of being as Jesus was. So all of these, these, these this connection, this particular scripture connects us or uh, opens a door for us to see how how simple it is, yet difficult to do the things that Jesus did. And I'm not talking about the, the physical opening of the eye as much as I'm talking about opening the eye and, and, and being able to see who he is. And that's one of the reasons I simply don't want to move from this particular scripture until we um, get an understanding of uh, be able to embrace it for ourselves and, 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 and then understand what he said at the end of that, um, uh, that, that uh, dialogue. He said, kill no man. Yeah, charged him. Read that verse. Then charge he his. Mind, you ready? Yes. And, and this is verse twenty. This is verse twenty. Then charge uh -huh. he. Then charge he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Aramaic, then he ordered his disciples to tell no man that he is the Messiah. Right. Now, if he didn't want them to tell any man that he is the Messiah, he didn't want them to.
tell anybody who they were, would he? In other words, tell nobody what you saw, right? Okay. Why why would you tell them? Why would you tell them that? Because what did Peter do? I mean, what do we? What would we have? What would we do if we get this information and not the experience that goes with the information, and not live the experiences, the living of it? Uh, the experience is um, having things in your life that validate it, what would we do? Someone would come to us and give us something and like we said last week, would take it away. We, we would let them rip it away from us. They would um, take the power out of it. Yeah. Then. So they weren't at that point where, I mean, it's the same thing now. Are we at that point where, um, where we are, we, we were like the son of God, and we are the children of God, are we at that point where someone would come right here and, and, and we could tell them we can do everything that Jesus did, does, stand on it without a doubt, and, 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 and someone threatens our life with it, and we still be unmoved and said, okay, take your best shot. Are we, oh, can we say that we are at that point? Without a doubt. Uh, I don't think we can. And we know, I and I believe we know more. I believe we, we have, we have a, we're in a position to understand a little bit more than the disciples did when Jesus told them that. And so I believe part of the tell no one was they're having to, to get that experience. And I believe at the time the Holy Spirit hadn't even... I don't believe they had that holy experience, holy spirit experience yet either. I don't. I don't know. No. No. They hadn't had that experience yet either. So no, they had. They 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 weren't they 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 weren't fully quote unquote equipped, if you will. So there was more more stuff. To um. Come. They had not had the experience, but also um, what did Jesus say? He said. I go to prayer and pray for you. Um, I think that it, it also, he had to be the guiding force from the other side in order for them um, to, to uh, be able to, to stand in the face of that kind of adversity. Um, also, Jesus said that, 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 um, once he left, he could be with them no matter where they were. And he said that um, it is the breath that would teach them, it's the spirit that would teach them everything that they needed to know. And that, that breath of which he spoke was um, his, his essence or his presence. So I think that he told him not to say it because he had not yet been to the cross. Right. He had not yet been uh, resurrected, I should say. Right. And, 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 and when I say that, I'm saying that they had a, a minute view of messianic essence. But when 
truth is resurrected, that we have a clear understanding of it because of being guided from the other realm or from the spiritual realm. That, that you understand what I'm trying to say? Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, now that, you know, I'm speaking for time that they were there in that time period, now that they, they hear what he has said, they've experienced, uh, and, and I'm not even sure that they experienced what Peter experienced, they mean the other disciples, right? Because then Jesus tell Peter, when thou art converted, I don't want to come convert that they're your brothers or something like that. Strengthen the brother? Strengthen your brother, yeah, when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. Yeah. Well, we, when, you know, you saw something they didn't see. And when you are, when you are certain about what you believe, when you are certain about what you see, when you're able to stand on it, regardless of the consequences, then, then strengthen your brother. You see what I'm talking about? Because he knew what Peter was going to do with the um, denials. Mm. So are we at that place where Peter is strengthened, are we converted, or are we at the place where Peter simply sees or hears? Are we in a position to be the Peter or the truth of the rock that strengthens, or are we the ones who see and are not yet able to strengthen because we have not totally taken hold of what we've heard and what we've seen. Well, Peter had to go, had to deny. He had to deny so that he would be able to more effectively strengthen the brother. That was a part of the experience. If he had not, he, he could not have been as effective in his strengthening had he not gone through that valley of denial because he okay. remembered that he remembered saying okay you know i love you jesus and i'll never deny you i mean how many of us do that right. i'll never put you down i'll never you know he he remembered all of that he said and then he remembered doing it and being told he was going to do it. And so when he came, when he came to that awareness again, and he knew that he'd been forgiven, I mean, how many of us go through something, go through an experience, knowing we were forgiven, and that made us even stronger, made our faith, I mean, it, it just gave us more strength, so that we could, uh, quote unquote, testify with more, um, fervor about our experience. Then that is more that is another way of, of saying that the trials that we go through are very necessary. Yeah. So that they can bring us strength as opposed to being there to oh, weaken us. Or to punish us. Yeah, we can say that so on the we, back end. Uh, well, but any of us at that place where um where we can um say that we get, if we are ready to do what strengthen our brother. We say all the time in here that we all have a journey and everything that happens happens to get us where we need to be. So Yeah. And I feel but, we but where are you now? Where would you and I say this kind of rhetorically for you to think about where you are. You know, where are you it, um, as an individual? And you're thinking, you're feeling about how what committed are you in terms of what risk, and I use it very loosely the word risk, what risk you are willing to take in order to make sure that you do what you were brought in to do. Well, you never know till it's right in your face. 
what you would do? I kind of thought that was going to come up. Well, you know your but people. I've been paid many times. Yeah. Think about it. Is that, what did you do? Was, was that, when you were faced with things that you knew you were brought into this earth to do, um, what was your response? Have you always responded the way that um, would, would, would put you in line with what Jesus did? Uh, did you do it sometimes or never? How did you feel afterwards? No comment? No. Um, yes. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I remember there were times when I would sit in services and I would try my best not to um, agree by saying any names and stuff. But it was so ingrained, and so I did it. And so I got to a place where, you know what, you can't do this anymore. And I'm not talking about overnight either. It took time. And now uh, I'm at a place where there are moments when I have to be very conscious because it's so automatic. I have to be very conscious of what's being said in order not to do that. Um, there have been times when things have happened to people who are close to me, and I've gotten angry about it. And uh, I should not have. And angry to the point where I wanted to do something about it. So those are struggles that, um, that I still have, but I'm at a place where it does not take me long. When I say long, I'm talking about just a matter of minutes now to recognize um, the denial thing, because every time I do that, it's a denial of who I am, of what I know, of what I see. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. Um, what would be the expectation? You told us not to answer. <laughs> I said you don't have to. <laughs> oh, why are you laughing on it? Because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so to think about it, isn't it? This is the other thing. 
that, that, that I want you to see that Jesus, um, when, uh, from the time that he let them speak, oh, from the moment that Peter saw, right? Um, what, what did it say? It, it, he, that Jesus began to show them how um, <clears throat> the the priests, the scribes, or the elders, how they were going to turn against him, right? How they were going to cause him pain? How they were going to make him suffer? Remember? Yes. So, is he saying that you don't experience this degree of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders until you actually begin to see the reality of your essence. And when you see the reality of your essence, um, that's when your trouble starts. Now this is the other thing. Your trouble going to start whether you want it to or not. Once you see it, it's, it's very, very difficult not to live it. And that's when your trouble starts. You don't have to tell anybody who you are. By virtue of your actions, they know who you are. And when I say actions, I'm not talking about necessarily your physical actions or even your uh, verbal responses. If it's um, a sense of your essence that they think, um, why is it that the super religious lady challenges you ever? And you and you let that everybody do that. Well, why does she challenge you? Yeah. Why why did you become the target? You see what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Why is it that people come to talk to to you, not just ever, but in the to rest of your trail? about things in their lives that they don't talk to anybody else. Why they pour their hearts in you? So you don't have to walk around with a cross uh, around your neck that reaches your navel and a Bible on your arm so they can cause you to sway to one side and quote scriptures all day for people to know who you are. People run away from people like that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> they know they're gonna get hit over the head with that Bible. Yep, you're right. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> um, there was a, a group, there is a group having a, a conference in this hotel, and um, they were they had the door open to the conference room, and somebody was preaching <laughs> and I thought about it how um, I was teasing things I said you know we're going to go in there and I said you know what <laughs> how would we tell the someone had done us the same way when we were doing things like that and I thought about how how do we change or get to a place where people see the ineffectiveness of that. And, and, and rather than having this huge sign that was outside, rather than have that invite people in, the huge sign talked about the apostle speaking, and the largest words were about writing this book that he had written. Mm. And he had a picture of the book on the big old sign up. He had nothing about what he's talking about or invite people and just pitching him in his book and his name at the bottom. So I wonder how I wonder if that were if I had gone in there, how would that been have been um, received? I 
to go there. My question to you. <laughs> it has a lot to do with it. Maybe. <laughs>
now can you stand up on Sunday morning and do what you do and, 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 and um, deny the truth of what I just said? How can you walk away from that? How can you not want to understand that? How do you do that? And in and, 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 and answer that, what do we do or what can we do to alter that? Am I going into that place and put that change in? Or do we do it the same way we get racism? Do we deal with religion the way we deal with racism? The hotbed of it is um, wrong. So how do we deal with that? By the way, uh, I saw where in Italy they saw a plan to um, uh, some quote unquote terrorists to, to um, carry out an act against the market. Did you see that? Well, the plan to do what? To carry out an act against the Vatican. They're going to attack the Vatican. Oh. Do it. Some terrorists are going to attack the Vatican. That? No, I did not. There's, I think there's like, what, 13 of them, you know? Yeah. Two of which are bodyguards have been locked. My ex bodyguards, I should say. I thought that was interesting. So how, how, what do we do at this juncture to make the, not to make, but to open the eyes of people so that they can see the truth and be made free by this truth? How can we do that? What, where do we go on the journey? Now that we see clearly what Jesus was saying and what Peter was, um, the expectations that he had of Peter based on what Peter said and saw, how do we, where do we go from here? How do we know we've not just begun the journey? We, uh, I guess we don't. We do. By putting it in the macro, much like the racism thing, but by uncovering yeah. and revealing truth. So we have to, so what you're saying, more, more so than walk into a hospital, get everybody by the bed, by healing them. It's better to walk the, um, the earth in solid and get everybody healed from the blindness that they have. Spiritual blindness. I beg your pardon? Healing from spiritual blindness is the, is the greater healing. He was talking about it. But I, I believe that that's the only healing we're going to have. Yeah. I believe that um, the, um, you, you remember oh, 20, 15, 20 years ago when people got healed by the land on the hand? Uh huh. I believe that that, that was a spiritual manifestation. That the manifestation of a spiritual truth that was God man to a place to understand it more deeply or more, see it more clearly. And now that we see it more clearly, there is. The, the spiritual healing that the healing that takes place now is more spiritual than it is physical. You don't see men doing that now. At least I don't anyway. Do any of you? No, no, sir. I don't I don't see him doing that anymore. Um what was Jesus so, so, go ahead. What was Jesus doing? What had Jesus done? when he said greater things will you do? Had he just done something physical? Does anybody remember? No. Mm -hmm. That was on the heels of him being questioned um, about um, when someone said, where are you going? Oh, we don't know where you're going. But, In the meantime, while you um while you're looking uh for that, um I want to say in regards to uh it's not so much also is turning the people uh to get them uh to see by going to tell them something. Oh, uh, just when you were um wow. making an example with uh Elton about the uh, very religious lady that always uh comes to uh question her. And you also talking about uh people uh, noticing who you are and it's not by your act. 
Um, if not, it's that they uh, automatically recognize uh, you and it's something, they, it's almost as if they feel you and it's something in them that uh, resonates uh, them. So with that lady uh, coming to Evelyn, I think it might be, um, it could be one of, of two things, if not both. Uh, one, uh, Evelyn is definitely a threat to what this lady believes in, and this lady uh, definitely uh, feels and knows that. And the other part is she could be just coming to Evelyn because, um, I don't want to say subconsciously, but uh, your true part of herself, um, that part uh, that not the adversary of, of Peter, but the part that Jesus was trying to talk to, but Peter refused to come out of, is... Uh, basically motivating her to go and talk to Evelyn because uh, that part knows that that is the key, that is the gateway, that is the, um, the door to, to greater understanding of uh, who she is. Um, I think it's the same thing as uh, if there, if, if we have a, a I'm just going to use a, a food analogy, a food that we really, um, that we like, but then all of a sudden we have uh, another option. Um, uh, that uh, we like even more. It's not so much that we say we don't want our first original uh, option as much as it's just, oh, I want this new option. So I don't think it's more so of just uh, of automatically walking away from uh, the, uh, I guess you would say the church as much as it is walking towards uh, uh, something that has a, grow, a greater um, pull or something that like, uh, is, is truer to the point where you don't even necessarily know that you're walking away from the, uh, the church because the church is behind you and your focus isn't really uh, on it. It's something that just gradually uh, may gradually happen without you even knowing it. I, um, when I talking to uh-huh. About when you make reference to the thing about Evelyn and the lady, right? Uh-huh. Something came to mind. Is that not her way of saying, why have you come to torment us? It's not our time yet. She didn't tell the word. He just showed up, you remember? Uh-huh. And, 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 the, and the, um, they immediately, the adversary immediately recognized uh, not only him but the purpose. But when I heard the brief being able to recognize totally what, you know, this is the purpose of it, but recognize that it's something different that needs to be stopped in its tracks because if it's not, it go change who I am at all change. I, I never understand why is it so much no matter what you show a person in the scriptures, if it contradicts what they have been shown, have been taught, they would take what they have been taught over what the scriptures say, and yet they say that the scripture is true. I don't understand that. Well, Pastor Two, huh? I was going to say, Two, she had Bible study at, at work, but she has never invited me. Do you want to go, Evelyn? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, uh, invite Evelyn, though. I mean, she would invite uh, Evelyn to the Bible study if she had faith uh, in uh, basically in what she what she knows and what she believes. If she really truly believed and knew that it can trump uh, the wisdom that uh, Evelyn has, then she would invite uh, Evelyn. But no, she's not, gonna, she's not going to invite Evelyn there. No, she, she knows. Subconsciously, so she already knows that that is a terrible thing to do for her in regards to um, uh, her mission, so to speak. Well, she don't want me to crash her party. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She knows that's the, the more important thing, and she knows that you can, and she knows that you have the, the power or the wisdom to do that. You are definitely a threat. So that means that she truly doesn't believe in what she says she does. True. True. So she's one of those who has traded the, the truth for a lie. Yeah, pretty and much. And as a result of that, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, yeah, uh, pretty much. And, and as a result of that, all these other things are coming to being, right? So, 
when you recognize that and you no longer do that, then even though you're not responsible for that transition and you will exchange the truth of life, it becomes your responsibility still to make truth the reality for everyone. Are we doing you that though? By, are we are we doing that by talking about it? Because I mean, if that's true, then that lady needs help. You know. And she does, and, and we are doing it uh, by talking about it. Uh, I think we are <clears throat> we are transitioning uh, thought patterns. I, I, I give you an example. Um, Monday night, I, I um, showed them some things in the scriptures, and one of the things that I, just, that I showed them was um, the thing that Peter said. There was no problem with that. But when I showed them where Jesus, now the next thing I said was that the reason people go to church on Sunday is because of sun worship of uh, Constantine. And no problem with that. Now, keep in mind, they didn't see the part about Constantine and sun worship in the scriptures. They didn't see the clarity of what Peter said written that they had to be explained. Right? Mm hmm they accepted those things. When I showed them that it was written in the scriptures, where it clearly says, when I brought your fathers out of Egypt, I did not command them to bring me a sacrifice. And I showed them what clearly said, um, the sacrifice of bullock is the same as sacrifice of a man. And, and on and on and on. And, and that was a huge amount of consistency about accepting that. I mean, to the point where it for a split second annoyed me. And I asked, why is it that, it, that you can accept this conceptual explanation of what we read, and can I accept the clear readings of what's in the scripture? Why, why you can't do that? And you know what the problem was? They could not reconcile that with what was written in the Pentecost about, in, uh, in Numbers, about sacrifices. Mm -hmm. They could not reconcile it. So the explanation of that was the Bible tells the whole truth, of course. But those things were written by being no different than, than doctrine is. They had, the problem was, they were afraid to even think that Jesus was not a sacrifice based upon those scriptures. They were afraid to think of that. They were afraid to even let that flow through their minds. That's, that's almost as severe as someone who suffers from PTSD fearing to allow the acts that brought them to this place of PTSD to flow to their mind. I, I mean, I actually saw fear in someone's eyes, and one was uh, on the verge of trembling. The more I talked about it, they were dead afraid of it. So how did you break through that? When, you, when you're talking about people who are coming to a class who have been told from the beginning that the things that you, you know, Jesus, that you thought you knew, you're going to lose them in him. Hmm. Now, well, how takes, do you, if you can't get it to, huh? It takes time because even with us, we had, there was a process of us going through that and, you know, being stripped away of that God we created for ourselves or who was created for us, it took time for to be stripped away of all that stuff. And there's still stuff that needs mm -hmm. to be stripped away. Mm -hmm. Now this is the funny thing. They've been with me 15 years. The average one. The other thing is, this guy who came for the first time, he was an atheist. Onto Carlos Hill. And the reason he said he was an atheist is because his mother stuff makes sense to him. Of course, the act never got answered. Couldn't be a 
God, because the one that the one who said it was a God will have answers. Now, this person said to this class for the first time and grasped everything I said. Hmm. And saw it and accepted it, but not a problem. And could regurgitate it. That's because he said he was an atheist and didn't have all the baggage. Yeah. Uh, atheist, and, and he grew up in church. It, it seems as though that the ones who grew up in church, who were, they were shaking in the wood or committed to it, um, the most difficult ones to reach, when it should be seemingly the easiest because they're the ones who, Supposed to have done a great amount of um, our, uh, studying or search for the standard, do you think? No. No, you remember we talked about religion. Yeah. Hello? Yes. Oh, what did you say? I thought I had. We're talking about religion. religion. And what religion does, remember? Yeah. You're right. Yeah, they they believe in religion, whereas this guy didn't accept all that stuff coming at him. So I think that was the difference. He, he probably really, was going through the motions. He didn't really buy into all the right. stuff. Well, you, 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 know, you probably, like many of us, had questions but didn't know where to go get answers. Yeah. And, and, and when, I don't know about you, but I know that the questions I had, I had since I'm not about to raise some of them until I got older. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I knew what would happen. I'm learning that lesson. Totally. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, I, I want to, um, I really want to continue this learning. Is it okay? Look at that. Um, what did what did Jesus really mean when you begin to talk about? Because I think after that, it says that um, that um, after 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 this transpired, from that point on, Jesus began to teach them of the things that he would have to suffer at the hands of the elders, the priests and the scribes and be put to death and be raised on the third day. I think it says something like that, doesn't it? Verse 21, yes. Okay. Um, what, all, what does all that mean? Because, um, and I think I, I mentioned this before, because um, it, what does it mean to be raised on the third day? Why not the second day? Why not the seventh? Why the third day? And and what does it mean um, um, to to suffer uh, at, at the hands of the priest? I think we've touched that, but what does it mean to um, uh, to be to, to be put to death? Uh, what's put to death? Because. I believe that um, this thing about Jesus dying on the cross for us, of dying on the cross, if everything is a physical manifestation of a spiritual truth, then what is the spiritual truth about a body dying? So, so and, and, and if it's a spiritual truth about a body dying, and, and there is a resurrection on the third day, um, what does that mean? Um, and in relationship to those who believe that Jesus um, was 100% God, which is impossible because God can't die. Um, that kind of thing. But I want you, I want you to pursue that understanding of what it means for that third day. Any question? Hello? <laughs> no questions. 
um, I'll, um, I, I'm going to be there next week. I'll be there Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I definitely, definitely would like to look at this. The reason I say this, the reason I want to look at it is because I believe that this ain't dying I mean, being resurrected on the third day uh, instead of the seventh day or instead of the fourth day has some kind of link to Lazarus because Jesus came to Lazarus on the fourth day, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Hello? I don't know. We don't know, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> a, uh, I think he waited three days before he, before he, before he um, went to raise Lazarus from the dead. So, you know, why why was it, why did he do that four days and then he was resurrected on the third day? I think it was four days. I'm almost certain it was. That's what I want to look at because I think all of these tie into what we're talking about. And maybe if we can understand all of these things that tie into it, then we will get some sense of um, how do we, not how, but we we'll get some sense of our freedom to, to walk into what we're walking into, to walk into this, uh, the power of what we see written here. Okay. The only way uh, we're going to change people journey towards religion and, and, and have them to turn towards the light of truth is uh, to them to save the earth. Isn't there some the Jewish custom? Isn't there some Jewish custom that it takes the the soul about three days to actually leave the body or something like that? Yes, and, um, and the reason he waited four days was because he. Just, he wanted them to know so that Lazarus was dead because um, it was like it was, it was that four he was in fact dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a doorknob. Huh? But um, what does all that mean spiritually? Because see, let's keep in mind now that a lot of the Jewish customs are just as wrong as a lot of the Baptist customs. <laughs> So, um, there are, there are, there are those who would challenge that, but when you look at the customs, um, the Jewish customs, they mix those customs with enough truth for people to accept them. And when you look at the Jewish laws, the only people who were protected by the by the Jewish law, but not only, but virtually the only one, were, were the priests. The, the priests didn't have <coughs> one Is that any different than what happens then? Yeah, but there is a process of disconnection when you're dying, <coughs> when your body is, um, well, when you when you're dying, when you're leaving your body, there is a process. So they may be correct in that. that I agree. Yeah. And I, I, and so many of us, well, I don't want to get into the other things that custom, but because I want to stay focused on this one. Yeah, I, I do believe that. And one of the reasons I believe that is because it was not just a Jewish custom. <clears throat> it's a custom of, of, of people from the East period. Uh, you, you, you know, that it takes a period of time for the for the spirit to leave the body or for you to exit the body. And the reason it takes so long, whether the long be two days, three days, or 30 days, or 45 days, whether the little time it takes for a body to decay, um, it the reason it has not decayed completely. What's the matter? <laughs> we just had a little moaning here. Sorry. Sorry. Please continue. 
<clears throat> I had a moment. <clears throat> you you know I you know I have low self esteem. <laughs> you know, take people laughing at me. No, no, it's not you. But you have me over here crying. Anyway, <laughs> um, I I believe that the light stays in the body for that the child. Because if there was no light there, then it would deteriorate it. They wouldn't. Yeah. So there has to be something out there. But that's that's the kind of stuff that I want to get into next week. I really I want to delve deep into that so so as to be able to um understand more clearly the suffering that he's speaking of and the resurrection stuff, okay? Because I think the number three has a um, direct connection to what is being resurrected and how it's being resurrected and the reason why. Okay. Are there any other questions? Are there any other statements? Are there any other jokes? <laughs> I think we're all right. You want to tell me? I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. That was if she's going to fill you in later, Pastor. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> anyway, um, Barbara Jean Sheldon, Janice, I mean, Barbara Jean Sheldon, um, <laughs> because this is, uh, we, are get ready to talk about when we're coming together. Um, Bob, remind me next week to look at your call schedule, okay? Um, so we can look at, so we can look at some time, go away. Okay. Amen. Hey, if there's nothing else, um, I'm done. Well, it's good to see you, Pastor. <laughs> Good to see you too, my dear. <laughs> I, I, um, I'll be there next week. I, I can tell you that um, I can tell you that um, I, I'm gonna call the weekend of the 13th.